Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain how to test the ignition coils on this engine. I do have coil on plugs on this engine with two wires. So basically on this video, I'm gonna show you how to test the ignition coil itself, how to test the wiring, the power supply, the control line. So I'm gonna show you how to find the wires on the wiring diagram, how to find the pins. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna remove the ECM and I'm gonna show you some points regarding the ECM internal diagnostic and repair if you have any problem on the ignition coil which related to the PCM. All right, let's start. So first of all, my ignition coils are located right here. I have four ignition coils, number one, two, three, and four. And as I told you, there are two pins on the ignition coils. So basically, uh, we need to check the ignition coils when we have a fault code exactly for the ignition coils or when we have misfire fault code. So when you have a fault code, you have a fault code, for example, for one of them, let's say, for example, for cylinder number two. So the easiest and the quickest way to make sure if the ignition coil itself is faulty or not is to swap the ignition coil with another ignition coil not a brand new one you don't need to buy a brand new one right now because we are trying to see if the ignition coil itself is faulty or not so for example in this case if number two is broken i'm going to swap it with another ignition coil on this engine and then after erasing the code you need to start the engine and then see if the fault code is already moved to the other cylinder after erasing the code and starting the engine you see the code is already moved to cylinder number four it means the ignition coil itself was faulty so you can just go for replacing the ignition coil but if you swap the ignition coil and you see the code is still on, on cylinder number two it means you need to go to the next step to check the wiring and ecm could be the cause as well so first of all as you see on the screen for ignition coils on this car we have two wires so pin number two which is a pink wire is the power supply which provides the battery positive to ignition coil this battery positive comes from ignition coil fuse inside the ip junction box so here is the guide for interior fuse box or ip junction box as you see as you see ign for ignition coil 15 amp fuse this one is for ignition coils so it means if this fuse is broken you won't be able to start the engine anymore because the power supply uh, won't be provided to any of your ignition coils as you see there is just one fuse for all ignition coils and on the other side of the ignition coil we have control line as you see the control line on ignition coils they are on different colors for example for cylinder number two we have white wire and the other ones of course you see the color as well so if we have a look at the ignition coil number two right here so this is the ignition coil number two connector I'm gonna disconnect the connector and as you see over here there are two wires pink and white pink is the power supply and white is actually the control line coming from the engine control module so for checking the power supply itself you need to make sure the ignition switch is on grab the multimeter put it on the voltage I'm gonna use these test props you can insert it from the back as well or front, but they are really thin. They are not going to damage the pin. So the pink one, red prop over here, and black one on a good ground. So as you see, I'm getting battery voltage, which means the positive is provided on uh, ignition coil. So there is nothing wrong with that. So later on, I'm going to show you how to test the control line between uh, ignition coil and engine ECM. The next step, if you want to check the ignition coil itself as well, you need to remove the ignition coil and test the primary and a secondary coil resistance. So for that, I'm going to remove the ignition coil and uh, I will show you guys how to test the ignition coil primary and secondary resistance. But let's remove the ignition coil and see how we can test it. So this is our ignition coil for testing the ignition coil itself first of all check it visually make sure there is no visual damage on the ignition coil itself it's not broken it's not cracked check the connector itself on the ignition coil we can check the primary and secondary circuit so this is basically how we check the primary circuit 
you need to check the primary circuit between these two pins inside the ignition coil connector. So for doing that on the ignition coil, select the resistance and you're gonna need to measure the resistance across these two pins, just like this. And the value is something around one ohm, which is exactly what workshop manual tells us, something close to one ohm, which confirms that the primary circuit is fine. And for the secondary, I'm gonna put one end of my multimeter over there and the other end just there. And as you see, the value is six kilo ohm this time, which confirms that the secondary winding is okay as well. This is exactly what workshop manual tells us. So in any of these two steps, if you are checking, if you get no reading, it means the winding is already broken, it's open, and your coil is not working anymore. You have to replace the coil with a brand new one. After checking the ignition coil itself, if the ignition coil itself is okay, we need to go to the next step to check the wiring. We already checked the pink wire, which was the power supply. We confirmed that power supply was provided on the ignition coil but right now we're gonna need to check the control line on the ignition coil and for that as you remember the white wire on ignition coil number two is the control line which is connected to engine control module as you see on the screen uh, the control line for ignition number two is connected to pin number 40 on ecm connector and the connector code for this one is e triple g a k connector because we have two connectors on engine control module we, we need to go for e triple g a k connector so here's the ecm we need to disconnect the battery negative terminal before removing the ecm connectors so battery is disconnected uh, i have two connectors here and based on the wind diagram this is the connector that we are after so i'm gonna disconnect the connector all good so we are after pin number 4D. So as you see the connector guide on the screen, if you look at the connector based on the connector guide, this is 91, this is 74, this is 57, and this is 4D. So they are actually for the ignition coils as well for different uh, cylinders. This is 4D. You can insert the pin from here or from the back. If you look from the back to find the wires, this is exactly the white wire. This one comes from the ignition coil number two. And you see the other ones for the other ignition coils as well. These are actually for the other ignition coils. So I can insert the pin from here. Okay. And then I need to check the resistance from here to the other side on ignition coil to make sure there is no open circuit or high resistance on the uh, control line. Multimeter. I'm gonna just leave it right here. So I'm gonna put one end of my multimeter right here on the ECM side and the other end just right here so as you see i have the continuity and i can read the resistance there is no high resistance which confirms that the continuity is provided there is no open circuit so this is basically how we find the wires and how to test it on the car if we check the coils if we check the wiring everything is okay the problem could be from the ecm so we need to go for ecm replacement but i'm going to show you a quick way to test the ecm as well because sometimes the problem inside the ECM is not that much serious. We can get it fixed without paying for uh, entire ECM, which is quite expensive. So I have removed the ECM. I removed this bolt on the ECM as well, and I managed to remove the cover itself. I had just a layer of seal around it. It was not really hard to break into the seal and remove the cover. So once again, back on the wiring diagram, as you see on the screen, so you see the ignition coil control lines on ECM and the pin numbers are clear as well. I have two connectors on the ECM itself. Okay, the ignition coil pins are all located inside this connector. And now you see the connector detail for this connector on the screen. So as you see, pin number 57 is for ignition coil number one, pin number 40 is for ignition coil number two, 91 is for cylinder number three, and 74 is for cylinder number four. So the locations are clear on the connector guide. So as far as we have the pins, we can just trace it on the ECM itself to get something out of it. So of course, the first thing that we're gonna need to check is those pins 
over here so as i explained on this connector you see the pin numbers inside the connector as well so that's exactly 91 and then i have 74 57 right here number 40 the next thing is all those pins are actually connected to the board so i'm going to make sure that those pins connection to the board are, are, are okay but which one of these are actually uh, connected to those pins for the ignition coil you can trace it like this if you find one of them the other ones are really easy to be found so i know that number 91 number 91 the one at the top right is for ignition coil number three so i'm going to check the continuity between that one and here so as you see this one is 91 for cylinder number three the second one 74 this is a 74 for cylinder number four and the next one 57 for cylinder number one this is 57 and number 40 this is 40. so basically it's gonna be like this all those pins 91 74 57 40. so it's gonna be this is the sequence the first one at the bottom this is for ignition coil number three number four number one number two these are the sequence and because the ignition coil on this car they are actually coil unplugged with two pins we should have the transistors inside the ecm and as you see we have four power mosfet just right here that most likely they are for the ignition coils but i have to check them to see if they are really for the ignition coil so what i do the first thing after locating all these pins is to check the pins to make sure they are not broken they are connected directly to the board and the second one is actually checking the connection on the board between here to the transistor which is this one as you see these two are connected it means this one belongs to cylinder number three okay and the second one for number four this is for cylinder number four this was for cell number one which is right here and number two is just right there so we know that these transistors are actually for which cylinder so what you do you actually you can actually check the transistors as well i explained a couple of times in the other videos how to check the transistors uh, so you can basically check the transistors to make sure if they are working properly or not so basically it's just like that number one two three and four so you can basically check all those pins from the ecm pin to the transistor to make sure the transistor is actually working properly or not all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos